Hello, so today I wanted to talk about how we are building out and expanding on the Good and the Beautiful's Kingdoms and Classifications Science Unit. So first off, I wanted to give you a quick little overview of how we organize the unit. We do have a science wall that we use. We do it on posters, uh, foam core poster board with Velcro dots so that we can add the um, vocabulary words to it. If you've seen any other organizations of the Good and the Beautiful's history, um, sorry, not history, science units, you know that they come with mini books and vocabulary words and frequently games and different things to go along with each lesson. Now, we tend to put all of the things we want to take out and play with or really make sure that we protect and put them in little page dividers. Some people put every single page in a little page protector sleeve. I think that's a bit of overkill for us. Um, she doesn't really hurt the pages themselves and I haven't really seen the need for it. These are really fun games. I liked getting to do that little cup stacking game. But they come up with a lot of different um, resources that are built into the curriculum. So you don't need to add anything to it if you don't want to. It definitely has plenty to do just in the curriculum itself, but we add quite a bit to our science units and extend them out and depending on the depth that my daughter wants to go, we can make them, you know, one month long if she's not all that interested, or we can make them three months long if she really gets into it. And, you know, that's one of the joys of homeschooling that you can really build out any curriculum to make it really fit for your school and how your kids want to interact with it. So that's a little bit of a flip through of the unit so that you can see some of what it comes with and how you might organize it. So let's start with the Magic School Bus chapter books. Kingdoms and Classifications is of course a huge overarching subject. So there's lots that we can go take deeper dives into. This is literally the study of all living things. So we've got butterflies a field trip under sea, so the fishy field trip, the wild whale watch, penguin puzzles, insect invaders, and polar bear patrol. Next we have Usborne's activities, animal trivia and questions. I love that these are brightly colored and have all the questions and answers. They actually go along really well with the Usborne quiz tin. I think they might even have some duplicates, but these ones are all specific just to animals. So this is the Usborne quiz tin. And you'll see that the illustrations are very, very similar. So we can pull out just the animal cards for this unit to really kind of expand on it. They do have lots of different subjects in here. They have science and history and animals and all kinds of things. But for this unit, we would just pull out the animal cards because that gives us the life questions. Next, we have several eyewitness discovery books, um, DK eyewitness books. So we have sharks, trees, birds, and mammals. We also have the great animal search, and it has the answers here at the back, and really beautiful different pages telling you what to search for and find and what young child doesn't love seek and find books. So I did want to give you a bit of a flip through on these because they are so pretty. 
We also have Usborne Science Activities, Science with Plants. Now this one we will also be using in our botany unit, but lots of great different things you can do to learn about plants and how they grow. And I don't know if you can hear him, but my baby is talking up a storm in the background, so that's what that noise is. This is the Usborne Outdoor Book. Now, we did match a um, little trip to the forest, a camping trip, in with our Kingdoms and Classifications unit. So we have done that, so this was a good book to add to it. Just giving you lots of fun things to do outside, different things to talk about while you're outside. And it goes into a lot of different aspects of being outside. But, see, there we go. Stuff about trees and birds and bugs and hunting creatures and ponds and streams and river banks and seashores. So a very sweet little reference book there. So I already showed you our chapter books from the Magic School Bus for this unit, but we also have in the picture book section, Magic School Bus gets Ants in Its Pants, Going Batty, Looking for Liz, and Gets Eaten. Then we have more books from Usborne. We have Usborne Discovery Internet Linked Big Cats, Usborne's Mystery and Marvels of the Animal World, Birds, Nests, and Eggs, Bugs and Slugs, and The Young Naturalist. Next we have the Nature Anatomy Julia Rothman book and its companion notebook. If you don't know about these, you might have never met a homeschooler because these are extremely popular. There is a little bit of a debate on the homeschool mom blogs about the um, author, illustrator, and some of her politics. I personally think that as long as it doesn't enter the book and the book stays factual, I don't care about that sort of thing. So. I love these, I think they are gorgeous. I think they're lovely little reference books. My daughter isn't really old enough for the notebook, but I wanted to make sure I bought it so that when she was, we had it. So there's a little flip through. Really, really lovely. Um, we definitely won't use all of it and we're definitely not using it as a curriculum but it gives us something to work with. And here is the notebook. It does have a little bit of anatomy in there as well and little steps to draw. She's actually done this page and used it as a little guide to draw a butterfly and things, but we haven't really done any of the notebooking. She's a little too young for that but I wanted it because it was lovely. Next, I have our flashcard binder. So this is Classical Conversations Science Cards for Living on the Planet. So this is for cycle one, and we have um, kingdoms and classifications of living things. So immediately relates, and then they have lots of great information on the back. And then you can see that they start off fairly general and they get more specific as they go. They come with these really beautiful photographs and they kind of walk you through the whole thing. So I think this went along really, really well. We do take these out and play with them, but I think for organization wise, um, having one of these little mini binders and the little mini binder pocket sleeves helps a lot. I have seen other moms do it and I think it's just the best way to organize them. We do have just about all, I know, I think we actually do have every single um, group of the Classical Conversations flashcards and they are really lovely. They don't have to be in the pocket folders because they are um, this nice laminated plasticky paper 
and they are a pretty good size. They're about half the size of an eight and a half sheet of paper, um, eight and a half by 11 rather. So you definitely don't need all the extra expense of putting them in the binders, but I just think it's the easiest way to organize them. And then for my binders, I make these little miniature ones and Velcro them to the spine so that I can use the binder for something else if I need to later. Next in our manipulatives, we have the Clip It's Life Cycle Card Sets. Um, match it, clip it, build it, learn it. So this is just a nice little um, life cycle set for her to kind of play with while we read through the lesson. And it kind of gives you on the different sides, different little examples of the life cycles. So. I like Next that. One. We have a simple little spinner. I'm pretty sure this came from the Dollar Tree and it just goes through the life cycle of a butterfly. Now this came out of a completely unrelated little leapfrog game, but it's a simple little spinner that I thought we would use to learn about different animals. So they have all the different little animals here on the side. They've got, um, how their names are spelled out. And then I thought that she could spin and we'd go learn more about that animal or she could tell me um, what kingdom they're in, different little things like that. And I think there are probably lots of little games you can play with this very simple spinner. As a game that we're pairing with this unit, we're using photosynthesis. Now, they do say that this game is for eight plus, and it should take about 45 to 60 minutes. It's a really absolutely gorgeous game. It has a lot less to do with the science of photosynthesis and a lot more to do with the life cycle of a tree and basic math skills. So this one can definitely be used for the botany unit as well, but I don't think it actually 